We had the chance to interview a Wingspan player from Denmark, Boneless, who scored 172. When we mentioned that we didn't have a 160 range game yet, he took the challenge. In a single day, he recorded two games with scores in the 160s. Today, we're looking at how he's able to get such impressive scores in Wingspan. This is Legendary Tactics. For those of you who haven't played much Wingspan, I should point out that this score is not Champ of the Birds mode, where you get to replay the same deck over and over. This is the normal mode against four AI players. And today I'm welcoming Boneless to our channel. Uh, no problem. It was a pleasure. It's, um, I was very lucky to... It, it was funny because you you mentioned the last time that I... Oh, maybe, maybe if you have a 160 game, I was like, well, <laughs> I, I have nothing recorded. I, I did hit 160, but... And then... On the same day, um, I just happened to have uh, two of those games, which I recorded. Uh, so uh, it was it was uh, very fortunate because it's uh, I've had many other days where where I'm not hitting 160. You know, so it's, uh, did you get any <laughs> sleep at all since in between speaking with us? Yeah, I didn't play that much. I was just really lucky. It's, uh, oh. it's not uh, I can't really just if you ask me right now, go make a 160 game. That's not how it works, but. Yeah. On the day, I was just extremely lucky, and then the next day, I did the the, the crazy one, the 186. So there were a couple of days there, I just uh, was in the groove, I guess. It was very fortunate awesome. with my RNG. Well, you're very modest because I can't get anywhere near these scores. But uh, and and the game that you're referencing um, will be on our channel too. The the 186, which we believe is a world record. But I think you have to work your way up. And I mean, for me, I remember aiming and saying, "Okay, I need to get 100 points," and then 110. And slowly, you start to learn how to to refine your skills and get up to these levels. And yes, it does take a bit of luck. But uh, okay, let us begin the game. So today we're also going to uh, cover your 164 game. Um, after this one, we'll, we'll put these two together so players can compare two different ways that you achieve this amazing result. Uh, you chose the belted kingfisher off the start here, and you I know you love the kings. Um, it's a star nest, it's a pink power. It'll give you fish just about every turn for the rest of the game. So I think getting this, this guy really early is a great choice. Uh, why do you go for four food here rather than for another card? Um, I can't remember my starting hand, but I think the plan is to get the kill deer. So, because I at this point I only have the belt of kingfisher to provide me food, and you're, you're very gracious to say every round. It's, it's not exactly every round, but it does give a fair amount of fish during the game. Mm. But it's definitely not enough to to have ticked the box that is called food engine. So I think I'm um because the the other forecast was not food engine building card. I needed to just pick up the kill deer. And uh, then, then they play the uh, Kingfisher, of course. And then uh, all I'm looking for right now is actually some sort of uh, food generation. Right. Yes. And uh, there's the kill deer. So that's uh, you're you're probably smiling happily now. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, this is the holy grail of beginnings here. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, it's actually not the perfect scenario. The perfect scenario would be having kill deer, and then you can. You can draw the the rest of your good cards with the kill deer, um, but because this is a bit painful, having to to just pick up the kill deer, spend a turn on that instead of mm -hmm. having it in your opening hand. But it's uh, you can't complain when you get a kill deer and uh, build a kingfisher. It's, That's uh, true. It's a but, good opening. But that could be the difference between say a one sixty score and a one seventy score is that that single play. Yes, for sure. So this is interesting. You put the belted kingfisher down before the kill deer. Um, why did you do that? Uh, that that's a little bit of efficiency because then I have the opportunity to get one more fish from so, other so, players with the pink power. Other players, turns. yeah. Yep. If I play the kill deer and then the belt a kingfisher and then they happen to play a, a card in the river, then then I just missed out on one fish. So th there's no reason I just play the belt a kingfisher and then the kill deer, and then I take it from there. Smart. That's a great choice. Uh, now, in the game where you scored 172, you had the Chihuahuan Raven uh, for off-road food production in the grassland. Um, and here, you don't really have too many options. So, um, what what are you hoping for? Uh, some sort of food generation. I'm looking for a Raven, or an Eastern Kingbird, or a Daga Junko, or maybe some of the Vultures in case the, uh, the other players are playing hunt cards. I'm looking for some way to get free food. And if you don't um, get that card, what would be your option? My plan B would have to, to build in the forest um, because you cannot sustain a game with only a built a kingfisher. Yes. So, right. so, so if you don't get the, the free food uh, generation, 
uh, then you just have to uh, play in the forest as well. That's just no other option. So Canada Goose, that's going to be great, but it's you're still lacking that that food yeah. generation here. I was so. not even sure. I was thinking about maybe um, greeting it a little bit and just leaving the Canada Goose as one of the three available and just picking it up near the end of the round. Because I was, like you were saying, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking to play the Canada Goose right now. I'm looking for food generation. That's right. But the, the risk, of course, is that one of the opponents could have picked up the Canada Goose if I if I left it out there. They, they already picked up the other Goose. So I guess it was a, I thought I, I, I better pick it up while it's there. Right. Against human players, then that would be good advice is, is pick that thing up. Oh, so you've scored the Dark-Eyed Junko. So that was the, the coveted food generation card you were looking for. Yeah, um, yeah. Th this is the most important play of the of the game, and it happened when I was. Uh, um, for anyone who don't know, uh, 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 we have to cut the video right here because I I sent the video in two parts, and the reason is because I realized I didn't have my pants on, so <laughs> I, I, I went to stop the the camera and then I put on put pants on, and then when I came back, uh, one of the opponents had given me a free card, and that free card is the Dark Art Junko. So we are still resuming the game. Uh, at the same um, place where we left it, but but the reason you see a dark eyed junker that I didn't have before, it's simply because that I, while I was putting my pants on, uh, while the enemy <laughs> had their turns, they. Uh... <laughs> it's really hot in Denmark now, so we'll forgive you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and so this actually, I'm looking at your 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 layout here, and this is probably the ideal layout. Like this is even better than your 186 game, having the kill deer first, the dark eyed junko second, the belted kingfisher, and having the Canada goose in hand. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. I would say that it's much easier to just play with the kill deer and the raven. That that's just way easier, and it gives you more options. But I think if you want to hit. Uh, if I'm going for the 200 game, for example, then, then I mm -hmm. think it's 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 more uh, probable to get 200 with this kind of setup, because the Daga Junko, if you can get away with this, it's a bit more greedy than the Raven. Um, then uh, it, it gives you one point per round, so so it's it's better than the Raven in the late game in that regard. But of course, it it does require you to have, I think, probably both of the the King cards, the Kingfisher and the Eastern Kingbird. Right. It does but, force you to use the Canada Goose more, which is actually good because it's going to force you to stay focused on point generation. Yeah. Um, the thing is, when you're starting a game of Wingspan, you're not like planning, oh, I'm, I'm going to choose between the Dark Eyed Junko and the Raven. That's not how it works. You are, you are very, very happy if you get either. So right. in this game, I just happened to get the Dark Eyed Junko and not the Raven. Um, so, so I, I have to play with what I have, but I, I would agree with you. I think this this setup right here is is probably just as good as the Kildia Dark uh, Kildia Raven setup, if if not better. The only thing I'm lacking is the Eastern Kingbird, because right. then you're pretty much set. Then you have fish and and uh, the the grain from the Dark Eyed Junku and also the worms from the Eastern Kingbird. So, and then if you're also lucky, the opponent is gonna give you something. Then this setup could be would be really good i think but for sure it's much easier to play with the raven because obviously you can just get whatever you need you need two mice then you can just ask the raven to bring you two mice and he will do that right. so. exactly well just to go back to the end of round goal you needed sets of eggs in all three habitats which is so hard and that is that first end of round goal um it looked like did you just look at that and say i'm not even going to try for that because it just it takes so much to just get a sink like you have to get three eggs in three different habitats uh i'm actually not sure i think i'm for sure is looking for an eastern kingbird so the dream scenario would be eastern kingbird because then i could at least make one set Right. But uh, I'm, I think I hesitate to just play anything in the forest just to compete with the end of round gold. Yeah, uh, it's it's not that important, but but it is it is worth thinking about. Like in my hand, I have um, a, a high scoring card in my hand, but the thing is that costs three resources, so it's kind of hard to put that in the river or uh, in the forest rather right now just to just to be able. Right. I don't really have the resource. I don't have the luxury to go for that kind of play, is, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. 
And are you thinking about the second round goal with the, the wetland now? You've already got the Beltu Kingfisher or on, on balance. Is that even worth going for? Oh, wait a minute. Gonna... The, the, the first, we already done with the first round. Yeah, yeah. First, so, so that's out the window. The, too late for that one. But uh, yeah, yeah. All right, do you think you could win this end of round goal with just the four eggs there? Or uh, uh, I think are you looking to I'm, put I'm another I'm thinking about this a lot. I think I'm checking my opponents at some point in this game to, to see if um, so I think I do end up playing one more bird in the river, but I'm I'm not exactly sure. Oh, okay. Uh, we, we're gonna see in a moment, I guess. But uh, I think I am looking for one more bird to play in the river to compete with it. But it's at the same time it's so uh, right here. Uh, I like these two 160 games because I I feel like I I misplayed quite a lot. Um, so so already here I think uh, playing this lastly is uh, questionable. Um, right, yeah, that's one I don't see you play too often in the games yeah, I've seen. I, th I think in the beginning, I kind of like this card because on paper, wow, it's two points per round. That's what I'm looking for. Right. But uh, the, the thing is, with these really good games, then often you, you just have too many eggs. And yes. this Lazuli is definitely not helping because all it gives you is eggs. And it feels like, especially in this game, um, it just ends up being being a dead card near the end game because it, I can't really use the effect because I'm already full. And the reason is this: uh, the the Barrow's Golden Eye is is um, is a much better card than the Lasuli Bunting. Right. So so uh, I would say in my defense, I played the Lasuli Bunting before I could see the Barrow's Golden Eye, and okay. also because I think I needed um, I needed something in the middle row and maybe I didn't have something better. But the, um, uh, thinking about it, it's definitely a misplay. Uh, hmm. I think Lasuli Bunting is 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 not uh, a good card to, to play in the middle row. One one thing just I notice. <clears throat> sorry, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say it gives you too many eggs. So you have this problem. Right. So. Yeah. One one thing I wanted to ask you about. I notice quite often that you'll take a random card over the three face up cards, and you do this quite a bit. Um, how how do you make that assessment of you know like let's say there's average to above average cards on the board, um, but sometimes I see cards I'm like oh I definitely take that, but then you'll you'll go for the random one. Um, what sways your decision towards random over um, yeah. like the the sure thing? That that's an interesting question. Um... I think uh, while I remember, I just want to say that uh, uh, you asked about the end of round goal before. I think mm -hmm. that's also the, one of the reasons I played the golden eye, even yes. though I, I know it's going to be too many eggs, but, but I'm also thinking about the end of round goal to make sure I have that one. Absolutely. So, so um, first of all, um, if you have a middle row where you have, let's say, a, a barn swallow and then you also have a kill deer, it's, it's not uh, unheard of. Then there's one of the three cards you want. First of all, you don't want to just pick one of the three cards, because um, you have three draws in this in this middle row, so you can just take two random cards and maybe out of those two you get something even better. So there's a little bit of uh, you could call it turn order. You you only want to pick uh, pick up the card uh, the one the card you you are thinking about getting uh, as the last drawn card. Uh, so you you maximize the option of getting something better. But um, if there is a card out there that's just, you know, 100% you're going to get it, then it's obviously not that important. I think this one here is, um, it's, uh, it's very good uh, later on. Um, but I think I left it there intentionally for a while because I really wanted to, I'm, I'm, I'm also looking for a card to finish my middle row. That's actually mm -hmm. more important than picking up a really good late game card right now. Now, I noticed you passed um, back a few minutes on the American Crow. Are you just biased against crows because they're bringers of death? Or um, did you just not think that uh, the crow would was valuable enough at this in this middle game stage? Yeah, looking back, I think the crow would have been better than the Lasuli Bunting at least. Um, so so by that reasoning, it's I, I probably should have went for it. But it's a, it feels bad that the crow only gives you one resource compared to a raven. Uh, I actually, so I don't mind. Maybe a, yeah. 
I, I think your Lazuli bunting is actually pretty decent because you you have the potential for two points per turn, assuming you have two bull nests open. Um, yeah. And I think you're you're amplifying your points in the center row when you activate that. So I I, I'm, I want to defend your choice. I think it was pretty <laughs> solid. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my counter argument uh, you will see in the, if I remember correctly, uh, it's gonna be like four, four or five rounds where I just end up skipping this bird at the end of the game. Oh shoot! Okay, right. <laughs> so, so that would be my counter argument that it's that's, a bad bird. But uh, I think, like you, you mentioned, the crow, uh, it, it would have been better than than this. But mm -hmm. but the, of course, I didn't know that I was gonna get the the Boros uh, Golden Eye. Um, right. But, but I think your opponents are going to take eggs just about every turn. So the Barrow's Golden Eye, uh, that's going to give you a, a free yeah. point, right? Which will contribute to the. When you think the... about it, the, the Barrow's Golden Eye, or the, the, I think there are three cards like this you can play either in the forest or in the river that just keeps the egg. They are just like much better than a Lesuli Bunting. Uh, yes. Because they, you don't have to, to mess up your middle row to get eggs. These eggs, these cards right. can, can just give you free <laughs> eggs. So, so I'm leaning towards that the Lesuli Bunting. Uh, to be fair, in, in a normal game of Wingspan, it's, it's probably fine. Um, uh, I think it's a good card in, in most games of Wingspan, but when you're going for this super high score, it's it's just not going to cut it with the Lasuli Bunting. That, that, that's why I'm, I'm hating on it. But, but normally I would agree with you, it's actually a good card. Right, yes. Oh, special thanks here goes out to your AI opponent, uh, the idiot who stupidly played Anna's Hummingbird, which helps you out uh, perennially here. So uh, thank yeah. you to that AI computer, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that's uh, when I say that this setup might be as good as the, as the Raven. That is, of course, assuming that the AI opponents are very helpful and it's going to gonna give you stuff to help you. Yeah. Um, if 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 it's like a two-player game against a friend, then obviously the Raven is uh, just as important, if not more important, than than the Kildia. Very cool. But in these five-player games, and with the, especially because uh, the the pink cards are so good in five-player games because they trigger all the time, and because the opponents are, are helping you. So in these five-player games, the Raven is not as important, but in in like a two-player game, then the Raven becomes really good again. Right. I'm loving that common grackle choice you made there. Um, is that likely going to go down in your middle row? Because uh, that yeah. one that'll give you you tuck a card and you lay an egg. So there's your two-point generation. So that seems like a good finish to that row. Yeah, it's the best I have at least. I think we are approaching. Uh, so how many turns are left now? There's la around 10, 10 turns left. Yeah, uh, five, so, five so, this turn and whatever yeah. it is, six, six next. So we're approaching the the point where it's it's too late to play something like a Camel Cradle. Oh, but, okay. Uh, I think it's it's one of those. I don't have anything better, but but uh, I'm actually not even sure that that is the correct pl 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 play at this point because that also gives me X and I have too many X. Right. Yes. So uh, you're so, just gonna have to start smashing eggs all over the place here. Yeah. So let's say if you if you think about it, the cradle is. Uh, let's just ignore the fact that it gives you eggs because that's actually not important at this point. So it, it gives right. you one uh, a tuck card every time you use it. Oh, okay. Um, and that that is basically free because I have so many bad cards I can tuck under there. That's right. So. so yep. But I also want to play some more cards. So this Cradle here, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna be a very good card, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it might not be the correct book call to play it. Maybe I would have been better off just playing the the nine point card instead of it. But it's hard to say. It's uh, it's definitely not the uh, a dream card to get at this point. This Cradle, it's too late in the game. It would have been better earlier. Well, at least at the end of the game, you're going to score a lot of points for eggs here. But, uh, yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm looking at this game and I'm like, there's so many things I'm, <laughs> I'm right. not happy about. I, 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 I'm wondering how, how, how does it even become a good game at the end? Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. But it's still but, uh, better, better than most people are able to accomplish. But, um, so it looks like you might have to play a bit of catch up in the forest here then, uh, to get some birds down. So I imagine you're looking yeah. at mostly high scoring birds up there. You like that. Was it a wild turkey or something? I just, yeah, uh, I, I feel like I'm behind at this point and I, I think I felt like it wasn't going that great at this game. Um, so I'm definitely considering, uh, uh the bird that I just picked up. Uh, that that gives me that allows me to play another bird in the forest because I know Beautiful. Uh, there's only a few rounds left, so I might as well just 
fill up the board as much as I can so my egg legging birds can can get their day. Um, yep. And it's but, not bad. It's uh, th this card is okay. It only costs one resource and it gives you two two point for the card and it can lay three eggs, which is definitely this is one of the games where all the egg laying capacity <laughs> comes into play. Because I I I went for Lasuli Bunting, Kragle, and Goldeneye, which yeah. is uh, I still think the Lasuli Bunting was the, <laughs> it's probably not the the play. You're doing too well in your egg generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, that's good. And I mean, you're set on your end of round goals. You you've won the middle row. Um, you've got tons of I think those are called ground nests um, and star nests. So I mean, there's no one gonna, is going to be even close to challenging you on that. I imagine so. It's kind of nice when yeah. you can tuck those end of end of round bonuses away and not worry about them anymore, right? Yeah, I'm impressed that you can. Uh, I played wingspan for a long time now. I, I never know what these nests are called. I'm impressed that oh, you, yeah. you, you, you you know the names of them. <laughs> well, not not all of them. Something. I I have no idea what they're called. <laughs> oh well, that's fine because you know the game so well. But the other funny thing is um, <laughs> what what you're calling grain. Uh, some people call it wheat, and um, I, oh, yeah. I had I had to actually go to the rule book to look it up. It's actually seed technically oh that makes sense it's for birds of course so, it's yeah and like everybody think, calls them worms but it's invertebrates right and so it's funny that oh my god but well, who's nobody's gonna, gonna call them that that's, yeah no, that's that's a stupid to begin with that's just but ridiculous I, 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 it's it, it's the case that i've played other board games and we just call the grain and that's the case that uh, your other friends who called them uh what what did they call them that's also from other board games uh like Catan. that yeah. that one has uh yeah a lot of people call things differently Wheat. We yeah. and sheep and yeah. So now just back back about thirty seconds or so ago, was that a mistake when you didn't put an additional egg on your belted kingfisher, or did you do that intentionally? I think, uh, I mean, I, uh, uh, strictly speaking, it's a mistake. I think it was just uh, lazy, and I was like, eh, eggs, whatever, it's gonna fill up anyway. Yeah. So, okay. So, <laughs> so a mistake um, that had no impact on the end result. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably what it was. I think I, yeah. I I was done with this game. I just wanted to 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 to, to finish it. I I didn't even expect to score that highly in this game. So right. Oh, okay. Um, but but um, the funny thing is, if you start noticing now, uh, all the already now there's been several rounds where I didn't even use my Lasuli bunting. Um, yeah. So, but there's something we can learn from that too. And we talked in the one, 180 um, game that there's three stages, the middle, uh, beginning, middle, and end. And you played a fantastic early game. Uh, middle game was was kind of where things started. You almost started to amplify the wrong elements. But partly in this game too, you don't sometimes have a choice. So you might as well yeah. go for some points rather than no points. So Yeah, Th that's why it's so hard to spot these misplays because it's a case of... Um, I, if of course if I, if I had like a mockingbird, I would instantly Ooh. snap play that instead of the lazuli bunting. But when I don't really have other good alternative, I think one idea could have been the the fish crow, like you were talking about. But that doesn't feel good either. Right. Uh, so so when you doesn't really, oh my god! And now now I I'm resorting to playing a Mississippi kite in the in oh. the forest. That's how desperate I am right now. Pretty average. That is not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you if you had that mockingbird down in the middle row, would you repeat the Canada goose power? Is that how you would use it? Or if I had too really? much, uh, what are we calling it? Seed. If I had too much seed, then then <laughs> cool. obviously I could I could just uh, pump my Canada goose the points. But yep. the great thing about this setup with the mockingbird is I can also use it on the junko. So right. in those situations where uh, I'm 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 lacking uh, a seed then it's just perfect because then I can use it on Daga Jupiter that also gives one point and then it gives a seed. So, then you can so go back and uh, forth. Yeah. I can, I can exactly I can do back and forth. I had one game where I had exactly that setup. Kill the Daga Junko, Canada Goose, and then I think both of the Mockingbirds and I was that was completely insane because it's very easy to balance your economy with a with a a mockingbird. So you could just take it exactly how you want it. Very cool. One thing I really like about studying your games is that they all look very different, even though there's a common set of cards that you tend to cycle through. I mean, your 172 game, you're going heavily for bonus cards. In this game, you're compounding the grassland points and egg lane and yeah. some card tucking. And anyways, I, I, on behalf of everybody, I, I want to thank you for showing us um, different paths to the big scores too, and that the game can take many twists and turns. And I think that's why I like you. Yeah. I enjoy this game because there isn't a singular path to victory, especially with the randomization of, of cards coming out. Yeah, that is true. 
especially in your your normal casual games, there's uh, a ve- very many different things you can do. I would yeah, I would have to say that you have to have a kill gear or a goal if you yes. if you want to get the, that. That would be the one factor that that can that can put you in contention for a really really good game. But, Absolutely. Um, it, it's funny this Mississippi kite here. Um, it's a terrible bird. It gives me four points and an egg, so it gives me by like five points. Yeah. But I think I have. Uh, it was a case of I can see my resources are. Uh, uh, are dropping, but yeah, wild turkey here. It's just just look at the difference between these two cards. Uh, I think I should have. Uh, maybe it's a bit of tilt. I don't think it's the right, right play to play the Mississippi kite. I remember my thought process. My thought process is that the Mississippi kite. Okay, it costs one resource. I can get it up there. It has. It can. It can delay the problem of having too many eggs, and it can. Right. Uh, it can give me some points, and my alternatives at that point were really bad. If you look at the middle row, that is only the Kragle that could give me, if we just ignore the X, because the X are not a factor at this point. So the Kragle is a bad card, it only gives me one point. The Goose can give me two points, and the Junker gives me one point. And, and, and the five X I get from the middle row by itself, those are also completely useless. So, so the difference, the, the play was either to, to play a bad bird in the, in the, in the forest, or to just play the middle row, which was which just felt really bad. Right. Because, yes. Yeah, I could use none of the eggs. But um, that being said, I I think I I should have maybe still done that, and then I could have because I have the um, the other eight point forest card in my hand. This one, wild turkey. I should have saved up for that instead. I think uh, the yes. Mississippi kite is. I don't think there's ever a scenario. This is close, but there's never a scenario where you want to play this late game, or even at all. <laughs> Wait, I've seen you that <laughs> while card. you've been hovering over that wild turkey for quite a while here. I see, keep seeing it pop up, so you must have been really considering that play. But uh, yeah, maybe maybe it was the fact that I didn't have uh, resources to play it on the previous turn. Right now, I think I'm 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 uh, I'm okay with playing this in the second last round because uh, I know that my entire board is gonna be filled up no problem, mm-hmm. and the wild turkey can have five eggs, and in the last turn I can lay five eggs on it. So so I think I'm I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be full capacity and eggs uh, even if I wait until the second last turn to play the wild turkey. I think that was my thought process. That's awesome, and that's but, 39 uh, points, so that's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, yeah, the the wild turkey is. Is actually one of the best cards because it's a uh, uh, eight eight point by itself in the forest. Keep in mind the forest has lower scoring birds than the river has. The river has some crazy scoring birds, like like the the pinko kinko. What's it called? Uh, eight eight points and a mission card. That's crazy. Oh geez, yeah. The only mission cards you can get in the forest has only four points on them. So generally, there are more points in the river than there is in the uh, in the forest, and that is one reason that this wild turkey is just a crazy good card. Also, it can contain five eggs, so it's like in a game right. like this, it's it's easily thirteen points, no question. Yeah, it's exactly what you need. Here we are, the final yeah. result twenty two. That is solid. Which is why there's no excuse that I I play this uh, this stupid bird in the in the forest instead of the turkey. I should have just played <laughs> the turkey earlier, I think. That's right. There's very few people in the world who could criticize your gameplay, I think. So <laughs> I certainly no, won't even if, <laughs> consider it. If I had the, the, the choice, uh, I think I had some some more cleaner uh, 160 games I could have showed you. But the thing is, uh, this yep. was just this 160 game I got uh, right. right after we talked the last time that you also needed the 160 game. That's so, uh, But it's, it's actually also interesting because it's... Uh, Maybe it's it's more fun to 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 look at some of these games, uh, like without Raven, for example, and also yes. where I, I make a bunch of misplays. Maybe that's. Uh, I, I think it's very informative and instructive. We, I think we can learn a lot more from a game like this too, right? Like because you're so good at at deconstructing different options and different scenarios, and that's really where this what this game comes down to is, um, what choices do you make and when do you make them? Yeah, I think in a game like this, it's a. Uh, um, I'm I'm very much aware of the misplays uh, I make when I when I look at this game back, and even while I was playing the game, I was I was uh, I was pretty sure. I think in this game, it was also the case of I didn't really think it was going to be good enough. I think it was like a 140 game or something, but I had some luck towards the end. 
uh, this wild turkey, for example, come in very clutch because uh, it has so many eggs can be laid on top of it. And I got some lucky mission cards near the end and stuff like this. Oh, I, I just find it unbelievable that you can achieve this score once, let alone twice on the same day. So um, it's impressive. So your final final score is here, 61 birds on cards. 14 bonus cards, that's a, quite a bit lower than um, some. I mean, in your 172 game, you had 32 bonus cards. Um, we have 16, or sorry, points from bonus cards. 16 yeah. end of round, 39 eggs. That's actually probably above average on your results. And zero on food on cards and 30 tucked cards, which is actually pretty decent. Yeah, the eggs is the one redeeming factor, but that makes sense because I have all these like I've been criticizing all game, all of these cards that just gives me eggs. So if I don't have maximum eggs, then there's something wrong. Yeah. But uh, when the mission cards, that's, I mean, this time I think I only had the option of drawing these two or three. I can't remember. So, so, um, but in the 186 game, I, I, I drew six mission cards. So, mm. or I had six in total, I, I would say. So it's just. How, how many of those you you keep all of them right so so it's just how many of those do you keep maybe in the beginning you don't uh, keep one in your starting hand but right. all of them later on in the game you keep all of them so it's just a matter of how many of those do you get well and if cards. if people want to see how you perform when you're not making some of these um what you're calling misplays that sometimes aren't but um we do have the 170 game we have the 180s game uh, so please check those out. Um, do you feel like you want to go get a coffee, or um, do you should we show people one more game? Your 164. Oh, game? sure. Let's go. Yeah, let's keep going. I'm up for it. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Right, so we are going to show everybody one more game, and this is a great chance too. If you want to join, subscribe to the channel, all that we appreciate it. And Boneless has been so kind in sharing this game with us and supporting our channel. So thank you, Boneless, for uh, sharing all of your wisdom here. So we're yeah. in the, the. Tell me about what you. Uh, oh, uh, killed your. Drop right in because because this opening hand is crazy. This is and insane. There's a lot of interesting. There's a lot of math in this opening <laughs> hand. I want to get into. So Can we? I'm, I'm looking at these three cards, and and I really want to keep all of them. And then I'm looking at the Eastern Kingbird. And then, believe it or not, I'm thinking about not keeping Goose because it's going to really tank my progress in the early game. Seriously. But the reason I kept the Goose is because I, I did the math. And if I do kill deer one, pick up key, Eastern Kingbird, Kingbird three, and then I wouldn't have enough for Dark Eyed Junko even without the Goose. So this is what made it. So I, I just thought, all right, I'm going to keep the Goose. But the, the Goose is, wow. is not a, often a card you want to keep in your opening hand. The Goose is one of something you want to pick up later in an ideal world. But huh. uh, I'll, I'll take it anytime, personally. <laughs> yeah. But in uh, the other, yeah. there's there's the Great great Egret is is there, too. I mean, you, that one's going to be gone by the time you could possibly think about taking it, because we talked about that, that it's a, a late game card. But uh, it's a shame to see that one go. Yeah, uh, am I actually, maybe I am picking it up at some point. Uh, I don't think right now the Eastern Kingbird is all I'm looking at for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just circling the drain on that uh, one. Just yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's don't awesome. Take my Eastern Kingbird, please. <laughs> so we got the kill deer down and uh, Junko in hand. So, I mean, your your early game yeah. is set here. Oh, I am picking it. All right. No, we got them both. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah. And, and just so, so our viewers know, I haven't had a chance to preview this game before. So um, I, my apologies if I miss anything here while we while we talk about it. Sure. So um, I, I think my reasoning is my, now I have two food engine cards. I have the Kingbird and the Dark Eyed Junko yes. combined with the Killdeer. So I, I think I'm like, my start is going to be good enough. So this is why I, as a luxury, I pick up the Egret already now. But it's uh, obviously it's not a card I'm gonna use until oh, the last round, maybe even one of the last turns of the last round. So it's uh, um, it's 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 purely a, a luxury that I, I I choose to pick it up now. It also speaks to the fact that this great Grid is such a great great card that I'm already picking it up now because nice. Uh, it's a it's an absolutely insane late game card for sure. For sure. Especially if you have a, a nice food engine. The, the, the trouble is, I think in this game, I, have, I I come in some trouble because my food engine is not good enough. So the Great Egret becomes a, a problem to play yep. once it's again. It's expensive. I had this problem in the last game as well. Mm -hmm. So this is why I'm, I'm still not sure if the Kill the End to Raven is better or if this setup I'm 
I'm, I'm getting here is better. I think there are pros and cons to, to both uh, setups. That's it's a uh, it's a lot nicer. It's a lot more relaxing to just play with a raven than it is to play with the setup. The setup is more challenging because you can't just get the food you want, and you have to to think. Oh no, I think in 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 this game, or maybe it was the other game we just uh, watched uh, the that I had the the golden eagle, and I was happy when I got it, and then later I realized, oh no, there's there's no way I can get three mice. It's not happening. I don't have a raven, <laughs> so and I, I for sure don't want to pick up mice in the forest. So. So I, I love cards like you got rid of the Swainson's Hawk there. I love how there's just kind of, you know, cards that you know they're going to be instantly thrown away because they just yeah. really don't don't add much to the build that you're going for. But uh, yeah, I, I think I'm very specific right now. I'm, I'm still uh, the egret is the exception. Um, but right now, what I want is to build my middle row. I'm very focused on that. So so yep. even this uh, Gorillian Warbler is also a great late game card because it gives you a new mission card. Even that one I'm not that hyped about right now. I, I, I still want to have a good middle row. That is my my uh, my main concern right now. Right, yep. Yeah. And uh, let's just take a look at the end of round goals. So we need birds with a, um, what's that kind of nest called? Well, um, I call it a Canada nest, but I, that's not true. Okay, that's amazing. I, I what I call. <laughs> that's so good. Oh, I've forgotten the name of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, we'll call it the Canada nest because it looks like the Canadian sure. flag. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, exactly. so good. Yeah. Someone, someone in the comments can remind us what that's called. Yeah. Um, shoot, I know this. That's a bull nest. That's a ground nest, and hmm, doesn't matter. Um, so we need to get eggs in into those, and at this point, you don't have potential for that. So yeah. um, what I'm really learning from you is that those end of round bonuses are exactly that. They're bonuses. They're nice if you can do them, but you don't. It's it doesn't have to be your number one priority. Yes. And that's maybe something that's... that that newer players do is they focus like I have to get those four yeah. points and they fight and fight and fight and they lose all kinds of other points. Um, I... So it's their convenience, though. Yeah, exactly. I kind of transfer my experience from Terraforming Mars here because yes. I've, I've also seen some new players at Terraforming Mars just in round one they want to to as quickly as possible get the milestones and it's it's the same thing that they're nice if you can get them on your way but you don't have to go out of your way. If you if you stray too much, then it's it's simply not worth it. Yes, that's so, right. So it's it's the same thinking I had with this. Um, also, the other thing is, what choice do I have uh, at this point to get this uh, this uh, end of round goal? I think I had one star nest at some point or something. I yeah. can't remember. Yeah, that, and but, you're probably thinking more about getting the goose out now than anything else yeah, because I the want, junko I want a good is middle row for sure. Yeah, yeah the the junko is just so perfect, followed by the goose. Yeah, so. those two work well together, provided that you have some sort of additional food uh, generation because you need that. So in this That's case, right. I have a yeah. kingbird, and in the previous game, I also had the kingfisher. Uh, mm -hmm. So those cards are really good. Uh, it's really helpful. The pink powers in in the top and bottom rows are, are a nice supplement. Yeah, yeah. Or like like we already mentioned, uh, these mockingbirds or the other one with the yes. similar effect also, also works really nice with the junko. I really want to see you get a mockingbird. That I haven't seen you use one of those, but I'd like to see how and when you you use it and what powers you activate. And yeah, yeah. Um, um, the thing about the mockingbird is so good is, is uh, if you are desperately lacking food, like in this game, then yep. you can use the mockingbird on the dark eyed jumper. Yeah. Or if you have too much food, you can use it on the Canada goose. It just it gives you some flexibility. It's perfect. Yeah. Well, and as you say, you want to end the game with zero cards in hand, zero food in the bank, so that all yeah. of those resources have been spent on actual points. I remember actually my first game I played with uh, with the other two fellows from Legendary Tactics. Um, I misread the rules and I thought that food counted for one point each at the end of the game. So oh. I, I set up a food building engine and wow. I ended up with all this food in the bank and I was just sitting there laughing because I'm like, I'm just killing these yeah. guys. <laughs> and I got to the end and my score was so bad and I'm like, what? And they were they were howling at my incompetence, but uh, you you learn yeah. by playing, right? So <laughs> exactly. I think I um it's if that was the case, I would have hit 250 easy because some some games you just have so much. <laughs> yeah. But no, um I, I think I made a similar mistake yeah, the first time I played the board game Concordia. And oh, I right. was like, wow, I have I have a lot of 
of, of the of pieces here that gives me a lot of coins. I'm gonna I'm just gonna go all in and get some <laughs> coins. I have no idea how to score in this game. And then I realized that the co it's going for coins in Concordia is not a thing. It's uh, it, it doesn't give you any points at all. So that's right. So I made a similar mistake in my first game of Concordia. Well, and I, I was hoping to, even if it's not one point per food, maybe it's like three food equals one point or something. Even then I would have done well, but uh, yeah. no, no such luck. So makes and makes by sense. By the way, uh, to get back at the game and speaking of mistakes, um, earlier you mentioned that uh, I was good at knowing when to cut my losses, but yes. that's not the case here. Because okay. the, the second bird to the left in my hand, I can't remember, uh, um, it's it's a similar effect to the barn swallow. Right. That oh. is that is a card I should have played a long time ago. Uh, I think okay. The American one, Robin? American, yeah, American Robin. Yes. And this is a case of I was I was really greeting because I saw this game could be really good, so I was really greeting for, for some better card. But uh, at the end, I think what happens is I it's the case of, well, now I don't want to admit I made a mistake, so I'm not going to play it at all now. But <laughs> I, still should have, I still should have just played it. I think what happened, what's going to happen is I play some other dumb bird in the middle row instead. And then after that, I play the American Robin. And that's uh, so. So this is also one of those games where I'm, I, I regret most. Of, oh, at least I regret a lot of my decision in this game. Oh, okay. So, and and so, yet still, it's a great score. So tuck a card. Uh, what's the effect of the American Robin? Sorry, you tuck a card behind it and... And draw a card. And draw Just a card. Just like okay. the, the, the Barn Swallow that I'm uh, I'm using in some of the other games. Right, so you can cycle the game, bad cards. Yeah, I should have just played it uh, a, a lot sooner. It's, uh, it, it's definitely a mistake. Yeah. Especially okay. considering that I, I think I am going to end up playing it later. But obviously this card is, is a lot better if you play it earlier rather than later. So uh, it's a. Uh, I finally admitted defeat that I should have, <laughs> have have played it a long time ago. But but then at the at the time I played it, it was of course not as good as as it could have been. So right. Oh, okay. So but the belted kingfisher was certainly not a mistake. That was a wonderful addition. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, that sure. will help with uh, two end of round goals. Yeah yeah. So. Um, and also like I said, if you want to go for the setup with the dark eyed junko. Or rather, a setup without Raven. Then you need other forms of, of food generation. The, the the kings. I can finally remember their names because now I call them the kings, and I can yeah. remember. <laughs> uh, they they are just really good for that purpose. So, so you see, right now I just end up playing a, a bronze cowbird. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is, I, I saw um, um, your 150 game. Uh, mm -hmm. Your uh, cax. What is that? Cax. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's it's hardcore. A, it looks awesome. He, he he got some skills in, in wingspan as well. Yeah, he's he, he's he's doing exactly what I'm doing. This is, is he really? Yeah. It up. yeah, he's yeah. he's uh, in his game. I, I saw that the uh, earlier today, which is why I can remember it. So in his game, he had an uh, a barn swallow, and then he had the bronze king cowbird. And funnily enough, in that game, I was like, ah, you should have played the barn swallow instead of the bronze cowbird. I remember. Yeah. And now, right here, here I am. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and I'm doing exactly the same, so I can't even I can't even uh, call him out on it because I'm I'm uh, I'm doing exactly the same uh, quote unquote misplay that that, that he did. And, but, and to be fair, that's actually the only thing I noticed in that game. Otherwise, he played it flawlessly. Right, so, because uh, well, the the pink power in the middle row it kind of plugs up your middle row then, right? Because you're not getting any benefit yeah. from activating it. So, but on the other hand, there's always on balance. Um, did you have a better play at the time um, without it's also knowing the of when you do it? Like in this case, I think my reasoning is all right. Now it's too late for the for the American. If I should have gone it, I should have gone it earlier. Yeah. Um, because uh, the the bronze cowbird has more points on the bird, so you can argue it, it's like. If you play it later in the game, it might be a better card than the uh, the Barn Swallow or this American, whatever it's called. Um, but but uh, in my game, in this game we're watching now, and in the game where where your boy uh, uh, Dex was playing it, then then yeah. then uh, it was early enough that I think it, it would have been a better play to just play the. But it looks so bad, right? It's it's a one one point card. It doesn't look like a American Robin here. Right. Yes. But yeah. The, you don't think it's that great, but it's it's as you say, it might be a deceptively good card. Yeah, um, I think this one is fa falls in the middle. Like, like uh, play this card if you don't have something better. But, yeah. but uh, it is it is better than you think because the fact that it can also see now I played after the bronze bird is completely terrible. 
but the fact that this card can also uh, give you the ability to look at so many new cards that's right on top yes. of just talking a lot of cards and if you think about it this card is uh, one point but it has four spaces for eggs the bronze cowbird has nothing mm -hmm. so the the cow the bronze cowbird kind of creates a scenario where you have uh, too many eggs and then on top of that, that it doesn't contain any eggs by itself, so it's a uh, right. it takes up um, a valuable I, slot. The more I think about it, the more I feel like uh, uh, both of us uh, misplay by playing the bronze uh, cowbird instead. Uh, it's tempting though; it looks like a really good card. Yeah, it looks it looks good. It's like, oh, three eggs and five points, but yeah. The thing is that there are much better versions of this card that you can play in the forest or in the river, and in the middle right. row, you really want to to generate this insane point machine. Um, so, so like this one, yellow build thing, I, I would have played that much rather than the bronze cowbird for sure. Yes. It's just a much better card. Yeah. Yellow build yellow cuckoo. cuckoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much better. Awesome. Yeah, you remind me a lot of Cax actually because he, <laughs> he just it generally knows the spirit and he knows the skills and the powers, but he doesn't know the technical details. But And he's a player who he dives into a game wholeheartedly and just plays and plays and, and just becomes a master of it. I, I couldn't even touch his skill level, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, so it's really cool watching players like you and him um, doing this. Struggle. <laughs> yeah. <wins. laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. Uh, it's, for me, it's it's uh, it's which day you catch me on. Sometimes I remember the birds, but that to be fair, in our defense, there's like six hundred birds or something. That's it's, true. Uh, there's a lot of them, and there's a lot of maybe powers. Maybe four hundred. <laughs> there's so many different birds to keep track of, and yeah. so uh, usually I, I probably only remember the, the the best birds, but even those I I blank on more often than. Yeah, I can remember exactly what they do and and when they are good in the game, but I I just fail to remember their names sometimes. That's right. Well, in playing in this mode too, you don't get to see what their powers are. You have to play in the um, whatever the I don't even know the name of the modes, but uh, but this is nice because you get the the full layout. You can see everything at a snapshot, so that's kind of nice. And you sort of have a a sense of what your powers are. Even like once you've played them, you can you can remember yeah, it for yeah. a short period, right? So, but yeah, yeah uh, for sure. Have you played any of the expansions? No, I think they're not for the app, right? Those are no. only over the board, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's not that long ago that some friends of mine introduced me to to wingspan over the board, uh, but but uh, I think uh, sooner or later it it, it might be uh, fun to to play the expansion. But I haven't played it. I heard that uh, that they should be all right, pretty good, even. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah. I'd love to have it in the uh, the digital version. So it must be hard for you to get players to play with you because uh, you probably <laughs> destroy all your casual playing friends. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's it's a uh, like I mentioned the last time at the uh, my, my my casual uh, friends can still beat me sometimes because okay. uh, that's a huge luck factor. Yeah. Uh, so so it's 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 not that easy. Uh, Still to this day, if I have a bad opening hand, I'm still not going to get more than 90 points, you know? So right. Yeah. So that that's a uh, for those of us who aren't scoring super high, you know, that's a comfort. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. or, or maybe even less. Uh, but but yeah, it's. Uh, I would agree uh, with the critique that this game has a lot of, to do with the opening hand, especially if you, if you are very good at the game, then the opening hand uh, matters a lot. Or, or the first, how you can build up your, your starting birds matters a lot, yeah. Now you're starting to build out the forest rather than the wetland here. Um, why, are you, why are you doing that when the end of round goal for the last round is um, the wetland birds? Mm, I think, I don't remember my reasoning for the hummingbird. It looks, it looks odd. I think it's because it only costs one resource. But it's uh, it doesn't look pretty to play a hummingbird at this stage in the forest just because of the points. I don't know what what that is about. Is it because of my mission card or something? I, I'm not sure. Oh, that might be. But and only the, one mission card. Yeah, you're you're low on the mission cards too. Yeah, but uh, the yellow bill cuckoo is is uh, it's like all the pink birds. They're just better the earlier you can get them down. Yes, of course. But, uh, I have no excuse for the black chain hummingbird. I don't know why. I must have a reasoning. Maybe it's because uh, I need the type of nest for right. my cowbird or something. I'm not sure. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that could be. It, do it doesn't look pretty. I, I, oh my god, I still have a... Why do I play bad cards when I have a wild turkey in hand? <laughs> in the most games. I, I don't understand it. 
but uh, you've, you've got four pink powers down now. So, I mean, you're just getting yeah. like insane help from your um, opponents. <laughs> I think uh, I remember the reason now. Uh, the reason, oh, actually, I don't remember, but I, when I look at this, the more I think about it, it's probably the case that uh, I really want to play my river cards, but I simply am hard pressed for resources. Yes. So, so when you look at it, uh, at the time I played the Hummingbird, I was probably uh, almost uh, max capacity with my eggs, and I didn't have near enough fish or mice to play all the good stuff in the river. Gotcha. Okay. And you so took that, the... that, that could have been why. Yeah. You got another Each... four. Sorry. Go yeah. ahead. I, I, I was just gonna say you got uh, four more points from that last uh, bonus card choice there. That's another safe play to already guarantee four points. Yeah, the other one was bad, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. But yeah, uh, it was zero points and, and not much potential, I think. Well, so that sometimes that it's an easy it's choice. A, it's a decent yeah. choice, yeah. Yeah, that's but true. Uh, I think it's the same uh, thing with the the last play, the last birds I play in the forest. It's just the case that I really just don't have fish to, <laughs> to yeah. play the good birds in the river. I what think at this point I'm I'm even. Uh, considering actually using the forest, which is uh, not ideal, but but uh, maybe even using the forest to get wow. the resources you want. But okay. uh, it, it doesn't feel good either when you are like banking on this middle road that can give you everything. So that's right. Yeah. The, oh, the wild turkey. Come on, wild turkey. <laughs> yeah. Um, are you looking for high scoring birds uh, in the in the wetland now? I assume. Yeah, I already have them. I have yep. two of those birds that just say you play another bird. Yep. So those are really good late game, but obviously so, these cards are just easier to play when you have a raven. That's this right. This setup is, uh, it makes you struggle. Well, there's the raven, but it's way too late to pick them up. Yeah, and you, no, can't no, even, no good for sure. you don't even yeah. have anywhere to put them, but uh, yeah. Yeah. But no, it's, uh, I think the, I'm not looking to pick up more cards now. I'm just looking to somehow find find resources or wait until my my computer gives me enough resources i think yep. i'm waiting for my king belted kingfisher to kick in i don't think it gave me nearly as, as many fish as i i had hoped oh that's too bad i like um, the american avocet there actually I, i've used him quite a few times and that would be a, a fifth pink power um it looked like you were considering him for a moment which one uh american avocet where did he go Oh, did I misread? Oh, the, the, is it the one that gives you eggs? Uh, yes. Yeah. In this particular game, it's it's not very good because I already have a yellow-billed cuckoo and a bronze cowbird and I play in the middle row. Right. So, so. so I, I already have a problem having too many eggs. So at this point, I only look at this card and say it's six points plus whatever egg it can contain. And it is pretty late for pink powers because there's just not much game left. Yeah. Am I even... Uh, okay, yeah, I see. So I play the the black. This is purely a card I, I'm playing because of uh, um, I wouldn't say desperation, but because I'm I'm realizing the fact that I have a huge food problem. Yes. So um, ideally, I wanted to play both of the great egret and the great blue heron. That's right. I but just, just don't have can't... the resources, so I'm yeah. It would take too like long. Meeting meeting it halfway and the. I just want to get this down as early as possible because uh, of my egg laying capacity problem. That's right. So the egret must be on your mind right now. Is that the yeah, one you're yeah. really hoping to get out? I, I think I made the, the call that in the last five rounds of the game, I can I can get enough food that uh, I can play an egret plus something else. Nice. But, um, it looks very odd to me that I have played the black chinked hummingbird instead of this uh, wild turkey in my hand. <laughs> right. Very, very strange to me. I... But if you think about the number of decisions you have to make in a game like this, like there's probably I don't know, like 200 or 500 decisions being. Maybe yeah, it's it's, it's uh, like people e think people who think this game is only about luck. It's it's uh, I think a lot of these decisions just fly over their heads. So they don't think about these uh, uh, these weird interactions and small misplays that you can make all the time. That's this right. is why I, this uh, game keeps me engaged because there's uh, deceptively a lot of skill cap, I think, mm -hmm. on top of, obviously, I'm not denying that there's a lot of luck yeah. because it is a card game. So. But let's say there are 500 decisions in a game and, and you're making 495 of the right decisions, then <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty good. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a, a, a generous estimate. Uh, I think uh, in this in this game, I probably made more mistakes than I I'm uh, I'm happy with. Uh, just but but this uh, this is also what makes these games today interesting because mm-hmm. I'm not playing flawlessly like like uh, uh, some of the 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 172 or the 186 game where where everything just went exactly like it should. Um, th- this is not the case today. Today I'm 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 making more mistakes, so it's uh, it's maybe us more interesting to to look at and talk about those. Definitely. Actually. Have you ever considered uh, playing in a tournament for this game? A wingspan tournament. I have no idea. Do they exist in Denmark? Um, I think they they just run them on the internet. But um, oh. I've got a I've got a Discord link, and we put a video out with uh, Tay Ray, um, and uh, he was he took us through sort of the tournament play, and it's a little bit different than um, playing against AI. But uh, I mean, you don't see scores over a hundred that often no, in those, no, no, those no. games, right? So, of course. Um, but uh, was that something you'd be interested in trying at some point? Maybe. Um... The, just I was gonna say the same that, that that is a completely different game. This is a this is just me trying to beat a high score. It's it's a, for it, sure. It, yeah. It's a, comparing this to a normal game of wingspan where you play with the birds you're gonna get and where you just don't rely on on having a kill deer every time and where you have human opponents. So maybe it's only a, a two or three player game where all the pink cards are not so op. That's right. So, yep. so this is. A, Totally different ball house than the than what I'm doing here. For sure. Yep. And it could be fun, for sure. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. Well, and that's the thing that, that you and CAC share in common is that you you think more about your own board in a high scoring game like this and just whatever it takes to amplify your points. You don't care if you feed points to the opponents, if it if it helps you. But with the yeah. uh, the human players, you need to be really careful. Like if you give them that one coveted piece of food they need, then uh, yeah. that could completely lose the game for you. I think I was uh, <laughs> under the impression in in the my beginning of playing Wingspan that that is exactly how you have to think. Never give your opponent anything. That's right. But yeah. I've, I've come around a little bit because I think there are some games where uh, it just it benefits you more than the opponents if you if you have some sort of um, bird that that gives everyone something. You like want more. If, yeah, if, if there are some scenarios where it just benefits you a lot more than the opponent, so you shouldn't mm-hmm. always completely uh, neglect them. Like, um, if also if it can help you with your opening hand, I think, for example, if you have a like a raven plus the osprey, um, that's kind of a good starting hand because uh, then you can play the osprey, then you can use the osprey to get a fish, and then you have enough to play the raven. And then this one fish that you also gave to your opponent is not nearly as as worth as much as the opponent or, or, or the fish you gave to yourself, because then you can play the raven immediately, and then you can have the two cards needed to actually activate the raven. So, so there are definitely scenarios where uh, you you shouldn't just automatically discount these uh, cards that gives your opponent. But you have to know what you're doing, <laughs> otherwise you're just gonna uh, feed them free stuff. That's right. So you filled your tap low here. No more space. The cards are yes. set. What do you What do you um, do with your last turn then? Uh, obviously, uh, I'm just gonna use the middle row. Uh, Spam some because, eggs. Fill up the belted kingfisher. Yeah. Yep. I think I was looking specifically to fill up the the board at the yep. second to last turn because then I have one turn to actually put a lot of eggs in. Perfect. But the, um, if I had unlimited resources, I would have played a lot more birds a lot sooner in the river so i had more space for eggs but yes this is what i i could do with the uh with the resources I had available i think very nice so satisfying when you get your engine up and yeah, it is it looks so nice yeah. no I, I thought you were gonna mean the the uh, filling up the board I, I think that is very satisfying yeah yeah absolutely having 15 yeah. birds it looks so nice it really does yeah and it doesn't happen every game that's for sure no 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 yeah not not very often Oh, big stretch from your avatar there. You know you've got this one in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I don't know. It's, uh, I'm, I, it's, I'm not displaying the same uh, level of hype as I did in the uh, 186 game. I think this one is like, eh, all right, sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd be through the roof if I had a score like this. It's coming, but uh, 
It's really cool. I think cool. it's also uh, the case of uh, I, I, I felt like I'd, I'd made some mistakes along the way, and I, I didn't even I didn't expect that it's gonna score so highly. I think that's also. Uh, that can be said with the first game as well. I think yeah. I'm, I'm surprised that both of these games uh, ended up being uh, one one sixty plus games because it felt like I, I made some misplays along the way. Yeah, well, you've just proven that there's just room to uh, grow and improve. Yeah, for sure. It, this is why it's uh, it's still fun to to maybe go for the 200 because yeah. uh, the, the more I play, the more I realize that there's so many different things that that can go right to, to increase your, your winning, your, your point potential in, in, in ways you, you don't really expect. So well, it is going- possible, but you, the RNG has to be killer. It's, uh, it, it's not very likable, li- likely yeah. it's going to happen, but it is possible for sure. I find that going back to a game like this and analyzing it and taking time with each of the decisions really helps inform forward gameplay too. Yeah, uh, I think so too. Uh, I was uh, a little bit, oh man, I, I definitely had some some pretty uh, 160 game to show you for your series, but I didn't record those. Yeah. But now that I now that we get a chance to talk about this, it's actually a lot of fun to to uh, talk about the the things I could have done differently and the. Uh, and stuff like this. Oh, for sure. These are really cool. So you got 57 points on the bird cards. You've got 19 for bonus points, uh, 18 for the end of round goals, 34 for the eggs, zero for food on cards. You never you never get um, food on cards. Is that kind of a useless strategy? Are they like good birds? Uh, food on cards? No, wait a I minute. I don't think so. Uh, I think that's... Are you saying food on cards? It does it count? No. Uh, hmm. it, that's where um, a bird like, uh, it a converts. Kill, kill... Like, like, for example, a golden eagle or something. Um, that's a good card with the kill ability. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then you've but got... The, no, no, wait a minute. That also just... Uh, you, you put the card under that, don't you? I never know which is talk ability and which is good on card. I guess I, the answer to your question must be that they, it's uh, not many good cards that put food on top of it, I think. Yeah, I I'm think this sure. is the one where, where it, it's those little, I think they're like one pointers and they, they store food mm-hmm. on the card itself. And sometimes you can either choose to take the food and use it or store it on the card for a point. Oh, yeah. But I uh, think there's one of those cards in the middle row I consider sometimes um, that the, it costs three resources. So it's a bit clunky to play in the early game, but it, mm-hmm. uh, either you can you can get a, a seed or you can put a seed on top of the card. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one is I consider sometimes, but uh, lately I haven't, I, I mostly try to, to get these high scores. So I haven't really, uh, I'm, I guess I'm a bit out of touch with the cards like this that you can play mostly in the forest or in the river. Yeah. Well, whatever you're mostly doing, the it's... forest, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think your your approach is working, so I wouldn't change anything. And you also had thirty six points from tucked cards, which is is quite high. So um, you really had that engine going quite effectively. It's brilliant. Well, thank you so much. And if people watching this are getting value from this wingspan content and benefiting from Boneless's thoughts here, please take a moment, join our channel, peck the subscribe button. Who knows? Maybe down the road, the one ninety might happen. Two hundred. Yeah. I don't know, man. Two hundred. That just seems. I, I, that seems. I kind of so. hope someone else does it because I'm. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of done with wingspan right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe take a break for a little bit. But, but uh, I, it would be nice for your series. I like the idea that uh, someone's gonna come with a one ninety, and join your series, and then I would feel bad if I didn't do two hundred, so I could have that one on your series as well. Absolutely. But so. no, uh, I'm. I'm not. I'm not entirely convinced. I'm gonna grind more wingspan. At least I'm gonna take a break for now. That's great. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you. And uh, if people want to join our discussion, please add your ideas in the comments below and show your appreciation to Boneless for uh, sharing his talents with us. So thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, yeah. And if if, if there are any more misplays, I didn't I didn't. uh, I think there's plenty to Brad and Proton in in these in these games today. So so if if you have some different ideas of of how I could have played some of these games today, feel free to share them. but yeah, uh, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. No problem. You're welcome on our channel anytime. Maybe we'll uh, talk to you about some terraforming Mars in the future. That'd be fun. I'd like that. Awesome. Thanks so much. No problem.